Jim Keller, you're a hardware manufacturer. You're our sole hardware manufacturer against all of these software geeks. <laughs> um, congratulations on your recent round. Thank uh, you. you know, pretty good, $700 million of a Series D round. So you've got a lot of capital to build hardware. Yep. Uh, I'll take that. So what kind of hardware are you building? And when someone says, no, I only do software, how important is hardware versus software today? Yeah, so, <clears throat> so GPU's got a, a real solid head start on building AI because they had parallel computing. But they're still relatively complicated to program, and the way they do, like, handle tensors and stuff actually wasn't native to GPUs. Now, GPUs have evolved to add tensor processors. TensTorrent builds a native tensor processor that's simpler and easier to program. Also, we build it so that the tensor processors natively talk to each other really nicely. And, um, and then we, last year, we open sourced our software stack. And like the, it's really interesting. The fundamental math of AI is simple. A equal B times C plus D. Like it couldn't be simpler at some level. But the, the scale of it is amazing. When I started building computers 40 years ago, we were doing millions of instructions a second. Now we're doing trillions of trillions of instructions a second. And to scale that takes a, like a special collaboration between the hardware and the software. So when, you, when your machines are up and operating, uh, I guess the question is, what are they enabling uh, for people in the room here? Well, well, right now, there's a really large family of models. So our mission is to run all the models with really simple, transparent code. So big LLM, people say, oh, the software is huge. Actually, it's 600 lines of code. It's not very complicated at the program level, but when you go down in the software stack, it can really explode. And that's where by building a native software stack that is tensor-based, it's communication-based, and it's open source, people can see exactly how that works and how it runs. And I think that's going to unlock a lot of AI applications that are currently hard to program with GPUs. So there's been a lot of debate on open source versus closed source AI models. And we just saw the R1 model being open source. We're seeing a lot of conversation where the leaders are saying, you know, open source will win. I think there's been a, an extraordinary velocity in open sourcing. How important is open source uh, as far as you see? Yeah, it's, it, so I have personal experience working with GPUs where we're trying to solve a hard software problem. We couldn't because the, the math library was encrypted or part of the software stack was proprietary. And because we couldn't look all the way down the stack, we couldn't figure out the problem and solve it. Now, open source AI is really wild because most of the high-end research is published. Many of the models are open source. Some of the weights, not that much of the infrastructure, not that much of the foundation library. So it turns out to be kind of a mixed bag. Like one thing we're going to do is we're going to open source our whole software stack. And it's for our hardware, but I encourage people, if you have your own hardware and you want software stack that works, you know, steal our software. It's a beautiful thing. And then I want to make it so many of the foundation models, the environment, the framework, the build and train your own models are also open source and available. And I think it's really important to democratize the hardware stack and the software stack so it's not just a few very large players that control the AI world. So we have a lot of people from around the world here. Are the machines that you're building likely to be used in the global south more than in, in North America? No, we're going to sell to everybody. We yeah, license the small AI configuration to go on the television chip, and we're building machines that can train large language models and everything in between. And the other part of our business model, and again, I think innovation comes from lots and lots of input. So the software's open. It's been our best hiring strategy, by the way. It's, this is great. Our programmers look at our software stack. They like it. They send a resume. Or worse, or funnier, they don't like it, and they send me a resume because they want to come fix it. And I, think, <laughs> and I think that's really great. And then we've licensed our AI and our RISC V CPU technology to people, and they like it, and they use it, and they send us feedback. So we're going to license our AI technology, but also build and sell systems. What do you want people to take away from the work that you're doing? What should they remember? How should they utilize the tech that you're building? Yeah, so, so AI doesn't have to be unbelievably expensive, unbelievably big, unbelievably proprietary. 
Like, that's not required. Like, the, the computational hardware is fairly straightforward. And we want to make that available to lots of people so they can use it. I, I think there is going to be a big up-leveling on how we build and write software and build machines. It, it shouldn't take two years to build a computer. Right? We want to pull that down. It shouldn't take $10,000 to buy a single chip. We're going to take that down drastically. Right? How, how much cheaper is the systems you're building compared to... Our, our target is 5 to 10x cheaper. I'm sorry? 5 to 10x cheaper. 5 to 10x cheaper. Than the current systems. And then we have a roadmap to continue to make that better. And then the other piece is, like, you have to... I, I like the big swing approach on using AI, but start small, right? Like, I'm asking my software team to double their productivity this year, and everybody's starting to use the, the code generators, the code helpers. We have, we're building our own tools to go check the quality and, and just start working on it and get used to it. Because, like, you're right. If your system's broken, like, patching up the broken system isn't quite right. But getting a real feel for it and using it and then starting to iterate on how your system works is really important. And I, I think everybody should, you know, dive in and embrace it. But we don't have to solve world peace first. Mm -hmm. I would like to make my code have a few less bugs.